And now, Sports Line Friday Night. Welcome to Sports Line Friday Night. I'm Eric Moon. Cole Sams joins us in a moment. The biggest five weeks of the winter sports season are upon us, and our focus tonight is on the plethora of late season boys hoops contests across the region. We'll begin tonight in 5A, where the Madison Bobcats have been an unstoppable force this season. Madison hasn't lost a game since mid December, but the Thunder Ridge Titans tried to be the immovable object to that unstoppable force tonight. Thunder Ridge students trying to pump up their team. But the hottest team in East Idaho made plenty of noise tonight. Already up 12 of the second. Barrett Wilson wide open. Corner three. Bullseye. Bobcats extending the advantage. Titans strike back a bit later to cut into the deficit. Tanner Scoresby scores and one. And the Ridge has some life. But in three point land, the Bobcats were money. Wilson again beyond the arc. Cash it in. Another trifecta. And Thunder Ridge needs a timeout. That would not change the momentum though. Camden Allred has the Titans seeing red. It's a 12 game win streak for Madison. Bobcats win big 64 to 38. Both the Highland Rams and the Rigby Trojans trying to keep pace with Madison and Thunder Ridge. Early in a tight one, Jace Walker driving the lane. This shot wouldn't go. Ridge Neal follows up, count it, and the foul for the Trojans. Highland Rams, Highland, excuse me, Rams ahead on its next possession. Colton Durham, 4-3, you bet. Rams knotted up at triples. Rich Neal and Colton Durham were at the forefront of their team's offenses in the game's first few minutes. It's Neal on the great pass from Walker here, but Highland comes right back with Ridge Varela to Durham in the paint. What a feed here. This game was neck and neck the whole way with Rigby coming out on top, 59-56. Despite being ranked as two of the top three 4 day teams in the state, only Pocatello or Preston can make the state tournament because of the three team conference they play in. So every matchup between these two rivals is a humongous game. Preston took their first meeting and tonight's duel was another great battle. And with tonight's big result, the district tournament runs through Preston as the Indians win at 67 57. Preston led by 16 points after the third quarter and the Thunder could not recover. Preston holds defensively to keep Pokey below its season average in another huge victory over the Thunder. While the Hillcrest Knights are not unbeaten, they are undefeated in the state of Idaho. And with the rematch with Blackfoot tonight, they can improve to 8-0 in conference play. The Knights came out ready to take over Bronco country in the first half. Ike Sutton with a slick crossover and caps it off with a terrific finish for the and one. Titan Larson feeds it to Isaac Davis down low, and Davis stays patient to get two more points. Check out the ball movement from Hillcrest on this play. Davis to Hepworth to Sutton to Talon Taylor, making beautiful music happen with that quartet. Blackfoot trying to keep up the pace, with Carter Anderson beginning to light it up from the outside. But closing out the first half is Isaac Davis, who, check this out, is going to throw down a wicked windmill slam for the exclamation point, leading Hillcrest to the big victory over Blackfoot, 88-55. Things were not looking good for the Bonneville Bees in the first quarter, as they were down 15 to nothing against Skyline, six minutes in. That's until Dallin Jardine finds Tyler Jordan in the corner. His big three opened the floodgates. Jordan benefits from a pinpoint half-court pass, and all of a sudden, this game's competitive. Nate Griffith hits a corner three of his own for the Grizz. And then Taylor Taylor says, if it ain't first, you don't succeed. Try, try again. The Bees go back to the undefended corner for another big three, this time for Carter Fontes. Ryan Egbert finds an open lane to put up a gorgeous layup. Take a look at this passing clinic by the Grizz. One, two, three, and Carmine Garcia puts a beautiful bow on it. If you like threes, watch Ryan Egbert plant his feet and launch an absolute moonshot. The Bees scratched and clawed, but the slow start kept them from stinging Skyler as the Grizzlies took it 69-53. We stay within the city limits as the Shelly Russes take on the Idaho Falls Tigers. Austin Cannon is first on the board with this long range artillery strike. Easton Watkins responds with a short range stop and go jumper. Tegan Sorensen then gets physical, then spins to win with the fade away for two. Shelly goes from quarter to quarter. Ethan Sharp, he drills it from downtown. Quarter three is good. He can get it done under the basket too as he forces off the center, puts up the one hander. That's good. So the Tigers try to double team him. He still gets 
gets it done in the paint. On the offensive now, Tigers respond by going to the top of the key for a big man three. That's Easton Watkins with the bullseye. And on the very next play, he does it again. Spotting up, letting it rip. He's got it again. Who doesn't love a center hitting three balls? Tegan Sorensen making a mad dash from half court for the undefended finger roll. David Moore to Cooper Kamek in the corner. Three more. He brings it down and prompts the timeout. The Russets, though, eventually took it in a close one, 64 to 60. A 3A showdown at Snake River between the Panthers and American Falls. Marcus Coombs gets the tough righty hook over the defender to fall. And then Luke Higginson drives baseline and elevates to the rim for the finish off blast. Zachary Grigg finds Bo Brower wide open for the three, and he buries the long range bomb. Higginson in transition, and he throws a dime down court to Coombs, who is all alone for two more Panther points. The senior is dynamite in transition, finishing from either side of the net with ease. The Beavers would battle all night long. Sawyer Bolgan is nothing but net from the left corner, but it would be Snake's day. Christopher Baxter is going to get the putback to fall as the Panthers go on to get the win over the Beavers, 59 to 50. Still ahead, you'll want to stick around for our top plays of the week. They're all fantastic, but only one can be our top play. Find out which one it is next on Sportsline Friday Night. It's the President's Day Super Sale at Furniture Row. Right now, save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Check out special purchases while they last. Plus, six years, no interest. The President's Day Super Sale. On now at Furniture Row. It's a competition as old as history itself. The athletes are locked in. Nerves are on edge. Get the speaker box loud. Hitting that stuff till you hear that sound. The Simplot Games are back. An Olympic-sized dream shared by the hundreds. And so is the non-stop high drama provided by the country's best high school athletes. Inside the ICCU Dome, admission is free. Local News 8 is always on with the Local News 8 app, alerting you to what's happening right now, helping you avoid delays, and keeping you and your family safe. Local News 8 is always on. <laughs> Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. Denver Mattress. Right now, save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Or check out the Summit Queen for only $299.99. Plus, six years no interest and free shipping. The President's Day Super Sale, only at Denver Mattress. Back to the highlights on Sportsline Friday Night North Fremont meeting for its second quarter. Huskies moving the ball. Michael Grant gets the bounce and in off the glass to close the deficit. Then Roy Wynn grabs the ball after a Cougar slip. He drives in. This is going to be an easy layup. North Fremont takes the lead 18 to 16. Huskies with a rebound and a long outlet pass. There's Carson Bone. He powers his way through for two more points for the Huskies. Levi Robbins with the ball at the other end for Firth. He puts it up and in for two. Cougars respond. Now Firth passing it to Kaysen Sorensen. He gets three more for the Cougs. But North Fremont goes on to win it 54 to 36. Last but not least, we head to Amity, where Clark County took on the Water Springs Warriors. Jackson Aldinger floats in for the first bucket of the game. And then Evelyn Lynn finds Aldinger beyond the arc for a three-point play. Luke Matheson is going to beat the double team under the bucket for two more. Passing it around, the Warriors offer an alley-oop layup to Ryan Demikowicz from deep in three-point territory. Corbin Nelson gets credit for that beautiful feat as the Warriors were borderline unstoppable on both sides of the ball, crushing Clark County 64-14. More scores from the court in the lone 3A Mountain Rivers Conference game of the night. Teton gets it done in Driggs against South Fremont 45-37. And it's been a tough year for the defending 3A state champions. But Sugar Salem earns an outstanding victory on the road against a very good Kimberly team 67-59. Perhaps providing the spark the diggers need for the final month of the season. In the 2A Southeast Idaho Conference, Soda Springs and Aberdeen score big wins in district play. Soda wins a close one at home against Millat, 54-46. And Aberdeen defends its home court against a solid west side team, 61-58 in a thriller. 
Marsh Valley built some momentum at home against the defending 2A state champs. Eagles soar past the Bear Lake Bears 76 to 50 and Ryrie dominates earning a 58 28 conference victory over Salmon. You can see more of tonight's results scrolling at the bottom of your screen or in the sports section on our website localnews8.com and the local news 8 app. At the Mountain America Center, the Idaho Falls Spud Kings tallied a big two points on home ice, defeating the Provo Predators 2-1. Spud Kings goalie Tucker and Nibier stood out in this one, backstopping IF to the victory with 31 saves on 32 shots faced. That's crazy. Spuds and Preds face off once again Saturday night at 7.05. Here we go with our star studded top plays of the week beginning at number three blink and you might miss a reverse poster. Barrett Wilson says no with practically a steel chair against Highland on Wednesday. What a block and that's just number three in our top plays. At number two, we head to Blackfoot. Snake Rivers Marcus Coombs is next up. Here he goes to the basket. That is slamtastic. Putting his defender on a poster and surpassing 1,000 career points as a junior earlier this week. There's the stare at the end as well. But our top play of the week comes from the Hillcrest Knights. Titan Larson has eyes in the back of his head. Watch this. Whoop! An incredible feed behind the back to Kevin Hepworth. A play so nice, you have to see it twice. And in slow motion, look at this from Titan Larson. That is on the money there from him. A terrific play. And that is it for our Sportsline Friday Night Show. For Cole Sams, I'm Eric Moon. We thank you so much for stopping by, and we hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Good night. Your local news is now available on any of these streaming services and devices.